for Ali, but uh, great to see him here. History has been made. 776 career centuries. Neil Robertson was awesome. A very comfortable winner. Six frames to one. Sean Murphy, that was a virtuoso performance. Hello again from Alexandra Palace. What a week we have had. We've had record crowds piling in through the Palm Court entrance here at Alexandra Palace every afternoon and every evening and making their way through here into the main arena. And what have they seen? So much brilliant stuff this week. They have seen only the third maximum break in the history of this Masters, the 40-year history of the Masters. They've seen Ronnie O'Sullivan become the sport's all-time greatest centurion, beating Stephen Hendry's record. And yesterday, they saw the defending champion taken apart, as he put it, against Neil Robertson in the semi-final. So what are they and what are we going to see today in this Masters final itself? Well, we've got the world number one, Neil Robertson. Some doubt was maybe with with my form, maybe in the UK, but um, you know signs were there in the UK that you know, I, was, I was making you know good inroads towards you know being back to my best, and you know I think my last two performances have shown that. You just got to have a good routine and do the simple things right. That means coming in and doing your practice, hitting some balls, and really, you know, I'm going to keep to the same routine that I've been doing for the for the whole tournament. I must be doing something right. I just wish I could start again. I love the venue, the crowd's always great here. My third final in four years is, is another fantastic achievement, but um, yeah, I'd love to win yeah, my second title here. There's an Australian guy called Neil that's going to have a massive say in the result. He's the world number one. He has won the Triple Crown. Sean and I played each other here a few years ago, the, you know, the year I won the Masters, and overall it was, it was a really sort of competitive match. It was um, you know, a lot of really big breaks, very attacking match as well. So. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't expect anything different. Um, you know, he's had a brilliant year. He's, um, you know, his, his game's in, in great shape, and um, obviously, it'd be you know, an incredibly tough ask to uh, you know keep up my performances and and get a win. You know, we as players haven't invented this title of the Triple Crown. The media have invented it and uh, given it, you know, away to the people that have won it. We try our best every week. The fact that I've timed a little bit of a good bit of form for this tournament is um, a coincidence of practice and, and effort. I can just going to go out and give it my best and see what happens. A few years ago, I lost to Neil in the final. Will I win this time? I've got no idea. Well, that makes three of us, I think, uh, and perhaps another 1,700 during the day haven't got a clue what's going to happen in this match. Such has been the standard of the two players playing for this wonderful trophy. I don't think we've really got any guidelines, or perhaps that final they played in a couple of years back. Yeah, 2012 final, Robertson won 10-6. Tactically, he was very adept in that match. I think he's scoring better. But as for Murphy, well, yesterday he was absolutely awesome against Mark Allen. Heavy duty scoring, and I think he's a better player. Yeah, I think tactically he's sounder. And both these players, though, have actually produced some fantastic snooker to make other great players look like virtual uh, spectators during their matches. It's very hard to call. Robertson in particular, last two matches, 6-1 Carter, 6-1 O'Sullivan. I mean, stats don't lie, Steve. Have a look at these.
that's Neil Staff. He already owns a Triple Crown. He's won a World, the Masters in the UK. Sean Murphy needs this one. Yeah. He'll know that only nine players have ever done it. He'll want to make it the tenth. Yes, but I think he'd be more pleased with the fact he's playing well, he's happy on the table, his tactics are good, his potting's good. But he is a student of the game, he knows the history, and I'm sure he'd like to get it on his CV. Technical. Players are often described as having a Rolls-Royce cue action. Sean Murphy's is more like an Aston Martin. Powerful, graceful and very easy on the eye. Everything is lined up perfectly in Sean's address and delivery and with the object of the exercise being to send the cue onto the cue ball in a straight line, that gives him the perfect platform. The result of all that is that he is comfortable with a long final pullback and he can generate enormous cue power without throwing the cue ball offline. Golfers talk about the quality of ball strike. Sean's is of the highest quality. Tactical. One statistic bears testimony to Sean's break building ability. At the 2007 Welsh Open, he hit four consecutive centuries. Enough said. Safety is not his strongest suit. He loves an open game which suits his style. Sometimes you have to dig in though and wait for a chance and maybe he pushes that boat out a little too often. Psychological. Until he won in Heiko last season, Sean hadn't won a ranking event for three years. For a player of his quality, that's almost unbelievable. He seems to thrive on the big occasions and you always fancy him to hold his nerve in tight situations if only he can find the consistency to get him to more finals. This match is, of course, a repeat of the first ever final here in Alexandra Palace in 2012. Robertson won at 10-6 and, in fact, has gone on to beat Murphy in five of their six matches since then, en route to consistent spells as the sport's world number one. And Dennis Taylor and Ken Doherty know exactly how it feels to walk out here in a Masters final. But when you think about Neil Robertson, he thumped Ronnie O'Sullivan, he thumped Ali Carter 6-1. He's going to take some stopping, Dennis, isn't he? Yeah, we didn't think he was going to do that against Ronnie. I uh, thought Ronnie would just edge that. I got that one right, so I'm not going to predict who's going to win today. <laughs> but both these are the form players. They both played unbelievably well. And the way Sean played against uh, Mark Allen was... Uh, well, it, it was fault in the snooker as well. So it, it all it's just going to be a cracking final, I think. Happy as you, as you mentioned, Dennis, Sean's break building and his mm. consistency in heavy scoring has yeah. been very marked this week. And that has a great ingredient for a fantastic final. Just remind everybody, what's at stake for Sean today? Well, he, you know, the Masters will com com complete the triumvirate, you know, of the Masters, the UK and the World Championship. I know Neil Robertson beat him in, in the final here a couple of years ago. That may play in the back of his mind. But I think uh, Sean, the way he's played this week, he'll mm. be full of confidence going. He's going to attack from, from the front. And if he gets bogged down and safety battle with Neil Robertson, I think he might come out second best. I think just play the way he's been playing, potting some great balls and scoring and winning the frames in one visit. Both players are at the top of their form, there's no doubt. It's going to be a cracking final. Yes, safety is something that we talked about mm -hmm. in relation to that uh, 2012 final and Robertson very distinctly had the edge in that. H how important could that aspect of this game be? That could be the, the main ingredient and Sean has worked on his tactical game. He said that in his interview, I heard him speaking with you, Hazel, and he has tightened up and his safety has improved because Neil Robertson is a fabulous tactical player. So that's going to play a big part. But Sean's back attacking the way he was a few years ago.
years ago, and he's got his mum, Jean, here. I mean, yesterday was the first time yeah. ever she's seen yeah, him play, yeah. so he's got a lot going for him, but he's also up against uh, the number one in the world, so it's going to be fascinating. And once again, guys, this arena is absolutely packed. Yeah. We've got 1,700 people in here. <laughs> it's almost double the capacity of the Crucible, yeah. and it's been packed more or less every afternoon and evening yeah, since last Yeah, the crowds Sunday. have been sensational. This is the new home of the Masters now, and I think all the crowds have really welcomed it, and they've come out in force, and again, they can't wait for today. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely brilliant for both players to come down that stairs to the music and to the stand innovation that they're going to get from this wonderful London crowd. OK, well, every match here since last Sunday has felt like a final, <laughs> but this really is it. Rob Walker, over to you. <laughs> Thanks, Hazel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We started a week ago with 16 of the very best players in the world. Now there are just two, and what a match this promises to be. Welcome to the final of the 2015 Daffavet Masters. The crowd here at Ali Pali are ready, the players are ready, so let's get the boys on the base. <laughs> Welcome. A class act on and off the bays. He has been brilliant this week, earning his place in the final with wins over Selby, Maguire and Allen. World champion in 05, UK champion in 08. He is just one match away from completing Snooker's Triple Crown. This is the one he wants and he is ready. Here comes the magician, Sean Murphy. <laughs> his opponent, a player who arrived from Australia 11 years ago with nothing, and over the last decade he has carved his name onto a list of the sport's all-time greats. A world champion who won here in 2012 and completed Snooker's hat-trick the following year. His win over Ronnie yesterday shows just how good he really is. Here comes the world number one. Can you hear the thunder from down under? Here's Big Robbo, Neil Robertson. <laughs> excitement here at Alexander Palace. Now, with our All-Ireland duo in the box, we won't be stuck for words today, and I get the feeling they won't be short of things to talk about either. Thank you, Hazel, well, and smiles all around, and what an atmosphere again. The reception for both these players, two terrific ambassadors for the game of snooker, it has to be said, one from Australia and one from England. Yes, Dennis and two gentlemen and a customary handshake. I think that's only been brought back in. We used to do it at the conference centre many years ago, but nice to see the players have a handshake with the trophy and what a wonderful trophy it is. Great atmosphere in here, Dennis. You, what a, what an ovation both play. players got in there. Sean Capacity Murphy. crowd, 1,700 people in this afternoon and this evening. Yeah, there's that wonderful trophy Ken mentioned, the Waterford Crystal. And who's going to lift that this evening? <laughs> you wouldn't mind that on your mantelpiece, Ken, would you? Oh, very nice. Oh. That was very close, but 
He's got the second part of it. Got it a bit safe. Sean can't pot this red, of course, so just looking where he wants the cue ball. Did you see the tournament pot success, Dennis? I mean, that's extremely high for both players. Yeah, Neil Robertson just edging the tournament. Long pot success rate. But this is the one we talked about at the top of the show. The safety success rate. There's only a couple of percentage points between them. So, But it's going to play a key part, I think, in this match. I think we'll see plenty of high breaks when the players get in, but it's who can get in with the better safety shot. I think Neil Robertson's safety yesterday against Ronnie O'Sullivan was really top draw. There's Sean's mother and Helene, Jean's his mother's name, Helene's his fiance's name, and it's hard to believe this is only her second time at snooker watching her son. It's more nerve-wracking for the family watching than it is for you out there playing. <coughs> Okay, and an interesting spectator in the crowd as well, the Robertson's girlfriend and mother to the beautiful baby boy that was in the studio with us the other day when he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan. Yeah, that was funny. I was talking to her earlier about Alexander. I mean, he was sitting on his dad's knee and <laughs> I was watching it back at the hotel and I wasn't listening to what they were saying. I just wanted to see <laughs> Alexander. He was, he was acting for the camera. Gorgeous little boy. It's the first mistake, but Hasn't left an easy opener. There's one that might pot into the left corner. He had to hit that very thin and just caught it much thicker than he intended. He came around immediately to have a look at the black. Does it pot into the bottom right hand corner pocket? It clearly does, but I'm not sure where he can hold it here. It's quite an acute angle. May go up for blue. So there's the first part of the final. One. Just lost the cue ball a little bit, but still okay on the blue. The, the red behind the black is potable into the left corner pocket. I think that's the only red he can get on from, from this position, so close to the cushion. That's not hard enough. Six. Yeah, it wasn't an easy chance by any means, and he's only going to get the six points from it. Sean Murphy, six. 
Best to 19, first to 10. Eight frames to be played this afternoon. And the remaining frames starting at 7 o'clock this evening. Yes, and that shot, Dennis, will give you an indication of Sean Morphy's policy this afternoon and, and this evening throughout this final. I mean, he had a straightforward safety shot. <coughs> Could have left it up towards the left-hand side of the table, but sacrificed that by trying to bring the, the black into play. And because of that, he's put himself in a precarious situation here. It is straightforward safety shot off some of the reds below the pink, maybe, but wanted to get that black into the open. And that's the attacking style he's seems to have adopted all week and it served him well. Really wanted that cue ball tight on the cushion. He's left a possible pot here for Neil. Well, he did have a look at the pot. See the one that's near the black spot he could cut in, but he may can on the other red, so let's have a look at what he's looking at. He was just looking to see if he could pass that red to pot. Well, it would be the easier red, but can you see enough of it? It's very tight. The other one, if he can avoid the cannon, he can take the other one on that I mentioned, the one to the right of the black spot there. He can cut that back. <laughs> and not a bad one. cannon on the brown. Two balls slipped past the brown. He wouldn't have really been on anything. But as it is with the cue power that he has, there's no problem for Neil to get back up to the reds from here. Yeah, and the other added bonus is that he's freed up the black spot because should he get on a red down at this end of the table, the black was on until he's just kissed it there. Well, it may still be on to left corner Five. or even up to the into the right centre. He's on a red into this right-hand corner <coughs> pocket. There you see it. Now, can he get out for black or pink here? He's blessed with a lot of cue power. Neil Robertson. Just wondering, then, it's one shot here. You could pot this red, screw into the two reds that are below the black and maybe have the black into the, into the green pocket. Certainly on. But he also has the option of maybe stunning out off the top cushion and oh, he's played that very well. Six. Excellent shot. Rushing into the shots, Neil. He did this against Ronnie O'Sullivan, but he made very few mistakes. But there's one. Neil Robertson, six. Once again, taking his eye off the pot, concentrating on the cannon. It happened so many times. And Sean Murphy, well, an unexpected chance for him. Looks like the reds are all eight. 
blocking each other into both corner pockets at the moment. So he's going to need one good cannon here after potting the red. If he can get on the, he was having a look at the pink, but he, his option could possibly be blue as well. Nine. <coughs> Needs to slow up that cue ball. Just ran on a little bit. And that makes this shot a little bit more awkward. Wanted to be screwing this blue in and maybe stunning down towards the towards the reds and bringing some more into play, but it looks a bit more awkward now. And the world went Jimmy White here again. He's been here all week watching the snooker. former Masters champion and he's a bit unlucky here if he can't get past the black to that red maybe he's 40. just okay yeah, no problem so this now is a decent chance for Sean Murphy and Peter Ebden here immaculate as ever he uh, been working with Ali Carter who well run into Neil Robertson, 50. who played faultless snooker against Ali, he only made a couple of mistakes in the match and lost 6-1 to the Australian. And we might as well show you our dear old friend Patsy Fagan, who's been here most days, uh, former UK champion and good friend of Jimmy's. Give us a little smile there, Patsy. Mm -hmm. Nine. Yeah, purposely played for the pink. Of course, that will certainly open things up into the this corner pocket. <coughs> Didn't get into that enough, but he's okay. He's still got the red below the the black, and I can still think he can hold for the black 25. into the same pocket. That wonderful shot 26. in the blue, Dennis, when he was tight to the to the cushion, dug down into the cue ball and split the reds out lovely. And this is the fruits of that particular shot. It was an excellent pot. Thirty-four. Might have to play the cannon this time because those two reds are not available into the right corner. They are now. Just that little nudge has opened both those reds. Great start for Sean Murphy. Forty-one. A change of tactic in his forty-two two previous matches. He lost the first two frames. Stephen Maguire. Never looked like missing against Sean to lead 2-0. Mark Allen did the same. So it's a change of plan. He's going to try and win the first two frames rather than lose 49. Them. Fifty. And there's quite a bit of tactical play at the beginning of this. Opening frame, but it looks as if Sean is going to virtually win the frame with one chance. Just needs this red. 56. Yeah, and it all came about from this uncharacteristic Miss Pink, you would have 64. to say, from Neil Robertson, just trying to hold for the red, took his eye off the pot. Sean Murphy, 64. Neil debating whether to come to the table. 
He is. But there's not a lot for him to look at. Yeah, frame conceded. In fact, he does concede the frame to the best possible start for Sean Murphy. He got one chance and he made enough to take the frame and he leads 1-0. Yes, Murphy in front in this 2015 Daffabet Masters final. And um, a few nerves, inevitable, even for a man of, uh, well, his ruthless courage out there, Neil Robertson, Steve. Yep, cagey start, and then when Neil did get in, he missed that pink, as we've seen. Um, and it will be interesting as this match unfolds, because we've discussed, you know, how's, who's going to win it, how are they going to win it. Uh, that's one frame where an unforced error has been the catalyst. Yeah. So I'm going, to, I'm going to write that down. I'm going to write down one frame, cat yeah. as, as opposed to somebody getting themselves in from a good safety shot and still doing it. So one unforced error. OK, and that could be the story of this final, as you so eloquently put it. Um, your impressions of um, Murphy's temperament, the way he started out, because I tell you what, that disco inferno when he comes in and gets the place rocking, it does really <laughs> G everybody up ahead of the final, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, it'll be del I mean, delighted to win the first frame, obviously, but also delighted he's not 2-0 behind, because in the last two matches to Steve yeah, McGuire, that's what's happened, it, and, and yesterday against Mark Allen, even though he had to... So, it's, a, you, you, it's essentially you get a good start in a major final, particularly against the world number one, who's been in awesome form in the last two matches. So it'll be over the moon with that start. Yeah, once again, we have a full house. We've been talking about it, 1,700 people in here. And two young ladies, there they are. Um, they're both called Amanda. They've been here at every single session. Um, Amanda you, with the blue play. hair is from Essex. Amanda yeah, with the break. pink hair is from West London. Uh, they met online and they were, they've gone to every match in Coventry at the Champion of Champions and they've been to every single match here. They are dedicated fans. So everybody who's been asking about them on social media, there you are. <laughs> yes, we've seen them here. Every day at every session, Hazel. Yeah. Snooker fans, two Amandas. Hope you're enjoying the final. You had two fans once, didn't you, Dennis? But they were. Yeah, they're in their 90s now. <laughs> <laughs> Both electrical, weren't they? <laughs> Shouldn't be a problem to just nestle into the reds here. Touching. Sean would have liked them to have been touching there. It would have been much easier to just play away down the table. You'd have to use the red and the pink to get down there. But that's opened them up nicely. And we've seen in the opening frame how Sean played a shot, a safety shot, where he opened the black up so he doesn't want to get tied up in a tactical battle. Not that Neil Robertson wants that either. Yeah, there was a shot in that opening frame that, uh, well, he went a bit close to the cushion, but to stun it in from being so close to the cushion and open the pack up, I mean, that was the, the frame winner. And not as big a target now, using two cushions. Very good. I say very good. Yeah, there's nothing that goes to the middle pocket there. 
and can't really get back down the table from this position. <coughs> just looking at the cushion where the black and reds are just to leave it safe. may put the cue ball somewhere near this bottom left-hand corner pocket, but the problem there is that he's going to hand the advantage to Neil Robertson. He'll have a simple safety shot to put him in a lot of trouble, so may just try and stun in and leave a touching ball, maybe. Touching ball, Neil. Well, that has sorted the problem out, because now Neil can get back up the table. The fact that Ren Moore declared a touching ball. He can just miss the black there and send it back to the bulk area. And as long as he covers that red that's nearest the right corner, he'll be okay. There's Brendan from Sheffield. Uh, well, you'd have to say the home of snooker. Although the Alexander Palace is a close second now, you'd have to say. Look at that crowd there. It's been like that since last Sunday. It's been fantastic. Oh, what a nudge there. But... <laughs> Can't beat a good nudge, can you? <laughs> Kiss off the brown. I'm not quite sure whether Sean can see enough of the side cushion below the middle pocket to play a similar shot that Neil played a couple of shots ago. Yeah, and he's looking to see if he can come twice across and possibly land on the red that's near the top cushion, but he can't do that. So he's got to be very careful here. He's played the same shot that Neil played, and what sort of a result does he get? A very good one. I think it's touching ball again. Touching ball, man. Yeah, touching ball again. I think anywhere. He really wants to be on the ball cushion here, directly behind the green, if he can. He's got to manoeuvre that cue ball between blue and red in the middle of the table. He's got to try and get this as tight to the cushion as possible. Just to make it that a little bit awkward. It's a lucky boy there. <laughs> Hit that all wrong. Still a possible pot on, but he could have finished in amongst the reds. He just hit it far too thin. <laughs> Certainly wasn't playing it that way. Off the mark is the Australian on his first pot. Well, he did have a red, but missed that easy pink in the opening frame. Yeah, that was a better shot than it looked. Three. Might be a little. Bit straight on this red. I would have loved to have an angle just to stun this red in and get on the pink. Problem is, if he puts the, tries to get on the black and put the black on its spot, it's going to be tied up. May have to screw back into bulk here. 
I'd love to get the blue back on its spot. Four. Pink will be tied up now. I don't think it's potable into even the left centre. Ten. Well, it may be. Eleven. If one of those reds around the black spot would be potable into this bottom right-hand corner pocket, that would be his choice, I'm sure. This has to be pinpoint. It looks pretty good. That's an excellent positional shot. I'm sure he's on this red here. 14. Not quite as intended, just a little bit awkward here. Just wanted that cue ball an inch or two off the cushion, but should be okay. Yeah, nicely played. <laughs> and when he pots this red, the black spot area will be in 22. the clear. Twenty-three. Still quite a bit of work to do the way the reds are situated. They're <coughs> not ideally placed just yet. Almost straight on the black, but he can screw back off the cushion and out to leave that red to the right of the pink. There he's queuing right down at the bottom of the ball but he's overdone that he's over he's just looking at the cushion that did seem to come off quite quickly 30. let's have another look at this oh well he wobbled the black as well but look at that bounce off the cushion this is a new cloth was put on the table yesterday and sean murphy was saying he found uh, just the first frame took a little bit of getting used to but the tables this week have been playing beautifully. Well, I said tables, there's only one table obviously at the Masters. Neil yeah, Robertson, fit. <laughs> But we've had a little bit of everything, Ken, this week. We've had, what, 26 centuries? Make sure you fold the off, the maximum. Please. Yeah, we've also had Ronnie O'Sullivan beating Stephen Hendry's record, of course. 777 now for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Amazing. Neil Robertson, of course, last season had a... 103 centuries in one season, amazing feat. First time ever. It's going to take some stopping. Oh, this looks pretty good. This looks very good if it runs. If it runs. Excellent shot. Excellent shot from Sean Murphy. Just going back to the century breaks, Neil's had 36 this season. Sean's had 21. And Sean had 41 centuries last season, which is quite an achievement. But uh, as you mentioned, 
a century of centuries from Neil Robertson might never be equaled again. That's one way of getting back up the table, but he's left a possible pot. No intention of the white going into the jaws of the pocket there. Well, this is certainly one of his forte shots, these long pots hold for the black. Excellent. Straight in the middle. Well, he's come up with a pink what? one. What beautiful queuing that was. Straight in the middle of the pocket. I'd love to get on this red just above to the right of the black. I could stun down off the pink. It's perfect. What a great opportunity now for. Sean Murphy for a counter attack. Eight. Forty. He's already thinking two or three shots ahead, Sean, just looking at the little triangle of reds there. He's got a couple of other reds, but he was looking at the three reds just to see if one of them was available. And if it is, it'll free 21. the other two. So he's already quite a few shots ahead in the thinking department. 22. Still looking at that red, isn't 29. he? He's not sure if it'll go. So he was thinking at least four or five shots ahead there on this occasion. If it doesn't go, then he'll have to leave the black in such a way that he can can in the mud. He'd Six. prefer not to have to play the cannon, but we'll know very shortly as to whether it's available or not. be the one to the right on this occasion. 37. That's the one he's been looking at and that looks very tight and he's looking at the plant also. So he may have to play the cannon. Bit surprised he's left it so late though, Dennis. He could have gone into the three reds off that last black. He looks a little bit straight on this pink now. He's only got one more chance. He's got to pot the red, get on the black nicely, and then try and split those reds. But he could have done it a lot 44. earlier. Good shot. Yeah, this is the one, but he's gone a bit close to the cushion because he wants to cannon the left of the 
reds there. If he can cannon that, that'll bring all three into play. But the white's gone a little bit near the cushion. Can't get his hand on the table. This is a key shot. Sean and Murphy, that was the problem. It was the cue ball going closer to the cushion than he intended, but he's got away with it somewhat. Had he been able to put his hand on the table, he wouldn't have missed that. Oh, good pot. That wasn't straightforward. And I think he's going to be nicely on the blue here. I'm sure he has an angle on the blue just to stun down for these reds. Oh. Just tried to force it a little bit. Hey, Robertson won. Well, he didn't miss many of those in his last two matches. Well, maybe the world number one just feeling a little bit tense out there. Yeah. One. Fifteen the difference. So if he can get colour, red colour, he will be 2-0 behind. Judge that nicely. Excellent shot. So red and pink will Eight. be enough. Good start from Sean Murphy here. Nine. Change of tactic. Ken, he's won the first two frames in the two previous match. He lost the two opening frames. Fifteen. Crowd acknowledged that was frame ball, but he still wants to pot this yellow. He doesn't want a chance for Neil to come back to the table. Seventeen. Oh yes. Well, Neil Robertson is going to come back 17. to the table. But he's 31 points behind with only 25 on the table, so two snookers required. And not the easiest one to hit here with the green being close to the black. He's got to go around the back of the black and hit the green from behind. Oh, has he flicked the snooker back? <laughs> no. That's one way of getting them. <coughs> you might pot this, swerve around the pink. As Ken said, two snookers required, but the bra's in a pretty good position. Black's always in a decent position when it's on a spot to try and get a snooker behind. No, oh, well, that's very unlucky. Three. Excellent shot. Very unfortunate for the green to go into the middle pocket. That's where he's got to go. First line's a bit out, but loads aside. Oh, I don't think he was ever going to hit it that way. Foul. Neil Robertson, three. Sean Murphy, four. <coughs> no miss called because we're at the snooker's required stage.
three snookers now need it. That's a pretty good effort. We've seen a few frames lost when players have required snookers. Joe Perry won a frame earlier against Ding Zhong Wee, where he needed three snookers, got a free ball, and ended up winning the frame. Well, I can't see it happening here. I think Neil Robertson here, Dennis, maybe just playing for a bit of table time. As you said, he looked a bit, a bit more nervous of the two players so far. Long way to go, of course, in this match, but just getting a bit of table time. Well, that's a excellent shot. <laughs> Lovely control. Not straightforward off one cushion, especially when they're in the middle of the table like this. You know, you'd think it's a straightforward escape, but you've got to be so accurate. Yes, quite easy to slip past the brown. Foul. So that's yeah, one of the four. three snookers. That's needed. One option for Neil, of course, if he puts brown and blue, he'd be 19 points behind, so he'd need one snooker on the pink, and pink and black to tie. It is an option, but of course, when there's only two balls left on the table, it just makes it a bit more difficult. Yeah, pretty good shot again from Neil Robertson. What would you do here, Dennis? Would you pot the brown and blue, try and maybe get one snooker on the pink? It's just where the blue's sitting, it's in quite a good position, isn't it, to get the snooker in behind. As you say, if he pots the two colours, he can tie with one snooker, but then you've only got that one snookering ball, so I'd, I'd carry on with the blue where it is. And he's a bit short on that, so... Sean would like to see this brown disappear, but he's almost tight on the cushion. Another chance of trying to get the snooker, but... When you're in this situation, you've got to keep the uh, object ball safe also. It's a long way short. Another chance for Sean to snick this brown into the left corner. Just looking at the angle. Quite amazing. It's exactly the same snooker that he was in previously when he slipped past the brown. Now, can he get the angle right this time? You know, always a bit more difficult, isn't it? Just coming off one cushion as opposed to two. Could slide here again. No, I judged it nicely. No Too hard. <coughs> a 
Sean trying to knock the black safe here. Just missed it. It's amazing with Sean, I'm going back 15 years ago before I retired from the game. I went to Peterborough when he just turned professional and spent two days practicing with him. And uh, I thought, wow, what a cue action this boy has. And uh, here he is going for the Grand Slam. He's been UK world champion He's just after the Masters, but always had a fabulous cue action. and. Uh, knew he was going to go a long way in the game and he's a model professional uh, Ken it has to be said yeah lovely lad as indeed Neil Robertson is as well love the game love the history of the game of course and he used to play with a strange tip you know when the tip was a bit spongy he used to take it off straight away but that was the type of tip he used to like to play with which mm. was quite amazing Now he was going to take the chance. He's checking the scoreboard. The pink's in a better position to possibly get a snooker behind the black, so he's had a good few tries at getting the snookers on the brown. Now he's going to try and get one on the pink. Mm, to put the blue, though. But look where the cue ball yeah, was. He could have glanced off the pink and got in behind that black. And Sean will be anxious to put this blue because he was a little bit more nervous when your opponent only needs one snooker as opposed to two. There's less pressure on, of course, but he really wants to get this down as quickly as possible. Chance now for Neil if this blue holds up. Five. He's played it pretty well. Pink into the middle of the table. He doesn't really want this pink close to any cushion. So if you can get the pink into the middle of the table, somewhere around the blue spot, and cue ball behind that black. That's where he'd love to put the white. Neil Robertson, five. Not quite. I don't think you're going to see any heroics here from Sean. Just try and roll this pink over this green pocket. Is the end Neil of the Robinson frame. Six. Uh, misjudged frame. that one by, by the way and finished up fluking the pink. So it's the best possible start for Sean Murphy. You can't do any better than take the first two frames. He leads 2-0. Yes, uh, Sean Murphy certainly settled the, the more quickly of the two. And uh, when you look at the pot success rate, Neil Robertson down at 80% and Sean Murphy up at 95%. And this is a bit of a contrast to the last couple of days with Neil Robertson. He's been way up in the 90s. 
Yeah, I mean, both these players come into this match here, their last two matches, they, they, they have looked untouchable. But, of course, that yet can't continue. Every day, as we've said, is a different day. And the start is always important. And Sean's got it. So, you know, if he can capitalise, he's got him in a hole at the moment. But it's tough to keep a good man down. John, you've been talking to uh, Sean Murphy's coach, Chris Henry, about what he's done over the last couple of seasons to, to improve. Because I do remember a few years ago we were talking about a case of the 40-itis, as we used to call it with Sean mm. Murphy. He kept breaking down in the 30s and 40s on his, in his matches. And it was so debilitating for him. Yeah, he's worked on lots of things. I won't, you know, obviously can't divulge what he's working on. That's their privileged information. But he changed his technique. He was telling me there's one or two things they've done technique-wise. And he's given some sort of routines and things to practice on to, to improve his concentration levels because he was doing that getting 40 to 50 and then breaking down so they've been working hard on that and obviously his break building and stuff because he had one maximum break in all his career up to this season and now he's had three this year so obviously whatever they're doing is definitely working yeah, in the last 12 months as you say three maximums and also four titles it's been a real resurgence in his career over the last few months since ironically that bashing that he took against uh, Mark Selby in the semi-final right here last year yes and it's one thing to actually sort of go right I'm going to change things I'm gonna I'm gonna but it's another thing to actually put them into operation because you know um, you know teaching uh, not necessarily that older dog but somebody who's established and has perhaps set in his ways to some degree the way the patterns around the table uh, effectively the sat nav that every player's got in their head about how to go about a break to change that and even to change the, the safety aspect you know to picture different safety shots um, it's, it's tough, uh, and so full credit to Chris Henry for doing a good job, and they've worked very hard. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a total reboot, isn't yeah. it? You've got to reprogram yourself. You I mean you may have been doing certain things where you've been putting a bit of side on the ball, for example, so you hit it in a different place, and all of a sudden you, you, you know, you might get right in the middle of the cue ball. You have to change the angles. You have to put so all the practice. You know, it's, it's a lot of hard work involved. Isn't it? How difficult is that to do as professionals? Because you know, you all have your technique. You all learn to do things your way, and then you look at the likes of somebody like Nick Faldo, and you look at Tiger Woods, who's had to re change and remodel his swing over the years. It's a very hard thing to try and master, isn't it? Technically, it's arguably easier. You can just go on the practice table and keep on methodically doing something different. But to I change your mindset when it comes to shot selection, well, that's sure a lot Murphy harder. OK, well, it's working. It's paid, certainly paying dividends so far. Murphy, the world number 11, former world champion and UK champion, 2-0 in front. Yeah, perfect start for Sean Murphy, but a long way to go. First to ten, of course, will be champion. Neil Robertson already had his hands on that wonderful trophy we talked about earlier. Beat Sean in the final here a couple of years ago. Dennis, there's a long way to go in this final, of course, and... It's going to be quite interesting how it all pans out. It's going to be quite interesting to see what happens with the cue ball if Sean pots this red because it's heading over towards the bunch or pack of reds there. It's a natural to cannon the red that's just to the right of the pack or the group of reds there. That'll do. One. You're never sure where it's going to finish, but uh, the way he was queuing in the first two frames, as we show you the shot again, he just had to just make sure of the pot and hope for the best with the cue hey. ball there. It's a good long pot, and what a chance. Super stuff. He's so confident. You can just tell from his body language. Didn't even look twice at that pink. Set. Just look what he would have been leaving had he missed it. So there was quite a bit of pressure on it, but as I said, just got down and potted it. And what a wonderful opportunity now. Get some points on the board. Eight. Pink ball. Fourteen. Back down. Fifteen. Pink again. Doesn't really want to pot the black because the black will go. 
behind the pink. So just try and concentrate on reds and pinks at the moment. 21. There's the pot success, very, very high percentage for Sean Murphy, of course. Dennis, 94%. Anywhere in the 90s is very, very good. 94. Excellent. 82 for Neil Robertson. Thank you. And they're head to head. Neil is ahead. 11 wins to Sean, 7. But Sean has 22. had a few wins in the majors, the UK Championship, a few times. Of course, the semi-final of the World Championship in 2009, 17-14. So although he's behind in the head-to-heads, he's, uh, he's had a few very good wins against the current world number one. Twenty-nine. Still three <coughs> open reds. A little short, but should be okay. 35. Can head up towards the blue. 25. Just play over towards that red that's to the right of the blue. 36. And a perfect angle to go into the pack of reds now. I'm just having a look. I don't think there's any plants on. It doesn't have to hit them too hard. Well, he certainly did hit them hard, and uh, he's okay. There's one coming over that left corner pocket. 40. He played a shot against Mark Allen where he went into the punch. <laughs> he, he scattered them everywhere. It was one of the best splits I've ever seen. Stunned this. 42. Wow. That's an error of judgment. Didn't have to hit that so hard at all. Position. 45. He looks 46. like a man on a mission here, Ken. What a start. Yeah, and everything going into the centre of the pocket. That beautiful noise is the... The ball hits the back of that letter. It's very, very crisp. Potting from Sean Murphy. I'm very, 51. very confident. I mean, he's really getting on with it. Average shot time, just 21 seconds. 29 for Neil Robertson, but I'm 52. sure that will come down for both players, particularly for Sean, anyway, the way he's playing. You could see that lovely long pause there before he delivered the cue. He had a terrific shot of his cue action there. 56. You can just see, watch how he pauses at the back, stops, and then delivers that cue in a straight line. 57. Well, it looks like he's going to have to use the pink here. He may try and use the pink to hold black the cue ball. ball. He's going to pot the black, use the pink to hold the cue ball for possibly red to one of the centre pockets. So 
64. 64 ahead with 67 remaining, so doesn't have to do too much with the red into the left centre, just drop it in. That's frame ball. The cut at the bottom of these, this cluster here is a little bit more difficult. Well, the red went to the right centre as well, and he's played it beautifully. 65. Excellent shot. I mean, that was a lovely shot, and that was free and ball. Had he have missed that, he would have put Neil right in amongst them, but he's full of confidence at the moment, and brilliant start. Seventy nine. Eighty. Well, we've had twenty six centuries so far in this year's 85. Masters. Sean's had three of those. Eighty six. Ninety-three. He's never going to miss with the rest. One of the best rest players uh, I've 94. ever seen, that's for sure. Very rarely misses with the rest. He's potted six out of six so far. This for his fourth century. Well played, Sean Murphy. One hundred. A prolonged round of applause for two. that magnificent century break, and he has got the world number one. Well, where he wants him at the moment, there's one more five. frame before the mid-session interval. Neil will badly need that just to settle down. 109. And he hasn't done a great deal wrong. Neil Robertson missed one or two pots that he normally wouldn't. Can't do anything when you're sitting in your seat. 114. Hundred and twenty. That's a magnificent break. One hundred and twenty-seven from Sean Murphy. He is flying at the moment, and he now leads the world number one, three nil. Well, what a start for Sean Murphy. He looks very, very relaxed there. Neil Robertson looked very determined when he came out. Uh, but that opening frame, there's a few shots that Sean has played, key shots, you'd have to say. And, and the one in the opening frame, when he, he went closer to the cushion than he wanted, uh, Ken, and then to, to dig down and get the stun shot, you know, it was superb, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh. And this was the shot, actually, one of the first frame. Nice to red coming into play. Keep the break going, but yeah, wonderful pot there. And have a look at this green. I know he ran out of position, over stunned the cue ball, but have a look at this shot and how confident he played it. Green into the center, screwing in out of bulk, lots of bottom right hand side, and back up for the red to the left of the black and to keep the break going. Fantastic cueing at the moment from Sean, looks very, very confident. 
Well, we've one more frame before that mid-session interval, and as I mentioned, uh, Neil Robertson can do with that. But uh, Sean, I mentioned earlier, there's Gina's mum. She must be absolutely delighted, and his uh, fiance there, Elaine from Dublin. Bet they didn't think Sean was going to start like this, but. He can't play much better than this. Can yeah. he keep it going? And as you said, Dennis, his previous couple of matches against Steve McGuire and Mark Allen got off to a slow start, lost the first couple of frames, but changed that around. Thank you. Good time in four. it has been. So thank you. Big frame for Neil Robertson. Neil Robertson I feel. to break. Needs to get off to Mark. It's okay, it doesn't matter catching the blue on this occasion, everything's safe. Pretty fluent snooker, just the uh, second frame. It lasted just over 32 minutes. Neil needed three snookers in that second frame, and he got down to just needing the one snooker, but that was the reason the frame lasted uh, as long as it did. But he's a pretty cool customer, is Neil Robertson. But he's being asked a very difficult question here from Sean Murphy. Has he got an answer? A lot of support here. Neil won support. Yeah, come on, Neil, but there's not a lot to come on. He's got nothing to look at. audiences throughout the last week have been absolutely fantastic here at the Alexander Palace. They've been very fair to all the players who care to have their favourites, but every player has had a fabulous reception from this very knowledgeable crowd. Just look at that. Fantastic to play under those conditions. Yeah, great trail for the players as well, isn't it? Walking into the arena, it's a wonderful applause, music, atmosphere. <laughs> Certainly inspirational, isn't it? Nita's gonna, Nita's gonna need a little bit of inspiration. Here, he has looked a little bit nervy in the first couple of frames, okay. That last frame couldn't do anything about that, but had his chances in the first two. Possible plant here. <coughs> a 
And now the blue's off its spot. It makes the yellow, brown and blue a terrific target to get in behind for safety. That red on the right side of the table, just a little bit of a concern, but shouldn't prevent Sean from getting back. Couldn't get over to that left side of the table because of the angle he wanted there. Same applies to Neil Robertson. Just got to make sure you don't go anywhere near the red, the right side of the table when you're playing the safety shot. Well, there's an interested spectator with a beautiful pair of big glasses. We love the nugget, Steve Davis. <laughs> At least somebody loves them. <laughs> Must be family. Now, this has gone a bit awkward, this frame with the black completely out of commission. Neil has a long red to go at, but... Pink may be available, blue off its spot, so it's got a little bit messy, this frame. He hasn't got himself into any sort of rhythm yet. He hasn't had much chance. He may not have a slight angle on this red. Because if he did have, I'm sure he'd already have been downplayed it. And you see, it's almost dead straight, so it's a big, big risk to try and pop that and leave the pink for the middle pocket. It really is. That's what he's looking at there. That's the player's view, almost dead straight. But when you're 3 0 behind and you've been kept away from the table, it's far from easy. Played it with a bit of safety in mind, but where's that red going to finish? He's OK, but it just shows you that he, he didn't really want to pot that and hold for the pink. He was edging his bets there. So it's simply because he's been kept off the table. If he had have been 3-0 in front, he would have knocked that in, left the pink. I think that's the difference between the two players, isn't it? Uh, Sean Murphy. Would have had a go at that red, of course, and would have just tried to hold it for the pink into the, the right middle. But Neil, of course, when you're 3-0 down, you're just a little bit more edgier and you're not feeling as confident. But he is blessed with a lot of cue power and that type of shot screwing into the ball because no problem to him at all. But he took so long over it, Dennis, didn't he? You could tell he didn't fancy it. Sean taking this red on. He's going into Wooder Reds. What a shot he's played there. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Oh. Amazing shot to take on. And has to be said. A little bit unlucky where he's finished then. Yeah, he took it on because of the red up in the balk area. He knew he couldn't just play safe up the table, so he tried to pot his way out of trouble. And he's very unfortunate indeed. <coughs> he's potted five out of seven of his long potted attempts, and Neil's had a go at two long ones and missed them both. Black ball. Yeah, he should be okay if he just lands on the black here. Well, he's short. I mean, he's Five not, he's not snookered on the black. Sean Murphy, one. 
Mayor Robertson, seven. That was seven points he didn't have to give away. He could have, he could have just played directly off the black. See, I suppose he wasn't snookered. He could have just played onto the black, but he thought, well, this is straightforward enough. And he gave seven points away. Back. Yeah, he's put it back, but again, he had a red to the right centre there. OK, again, pressure on the shot, but refused it. So he's been quite conservative, Neil Robertson, here at the moment. Black ball. He'll still be on this red, even if Sean hits the black. So let's see, will he refuse it this time? He's going to take it on, but Dennis, a lot of pressure on this. He's 3-0 down, red and ball, red over, bottom left-hand corner pocket. A lot of pressure on this shot. Well played. <laughs> One. Yeah, I think he put everything into the pot and uh, didn't quite get the cue ball where he wanted. So he's faced with another tricky little shot. I mean, I suppose he could. Well, he's got a few choices here. If he's taking a pot on. And he's looking at the brown at the moment. Big shot again. No. He's definitely under pressure at the moment. Here, yeah, Robertson, what? All down to Sean Murphy's play. He didn't really fancy that, you could tell. He never looked like missing that type of shot, and he. His quarter-final and semi-final, but a uh, little shake of the head. You don't see that very often from Neil Robertson. One. Well, I think we were all expecting a very close match in the first mini-session. The possibility that Sean Murphy could take all four frames, a long way to go with the black tied up. Me Robertson, okay, played three frames, 30 break. Yeah, at the moment, Sean Murphy is just dominating this Green. final. Stun off the top cushion and have the pink to left centre. If he has a nice angle on this red, he could bring the black into play as well. Just play a little cannon on the red, and that will send the black towards the left hand corner pocket. That would certainly open up things. There you see the black is going towards the corner pocket. Has he hit it hard enough? Five. I don't think so. Has he? Well, maybe he has. He has. What a wonderful shot that was. This was the cannon that Ken had predicted. Yeah. Good job, he didn't hit it much well, harder. The black would have went in. But this black rattled a few times in the jaws of the pocket. Let's have another look at this. Yeah, well, just, just the two wobbles. What a chance. Thirteen. moment it's all Sean Murphy but 20 it's all true how positive he's been he's played 21 seen the shots and played them 
every confidence in his ability and cue action on everything going into the center of the pocket. Great display so far. 28. You see pot success now up to 95%. 76 for Neil Robertson. It's been a 29. while for him since he's been down that low. Well, Sean Murphy at the moment is playing the way he did when he lifted that world title trophy. It's hard to believe it's 10 years ago that he defeated Matthew Stevens in a wonderful display of snooker. And he's back at his brilliant best, it has to be said. 36. This is a player that was 37. talking about giving the game up last year, and here he is playing like this. Just brought those two reds 44. into play as well. Ninety-six percent success rate in this final so far. That's some going. Nice. Neil Robertson, believe it or not, this quarter final 45. with Ali Carter was at 97 percent but he's not getting many chances this afternoon might have to risk the cannon here just to stop the white from going up the table and that has finished awkward he wanted to hit that red full ball 52. and he would have been perfect on the two reds. Now he's going to need the extension again. Well, if he's going to play the hole for the black, what a delicate shot he's got to play here. I mean, it's not a straightforward pot. I don't know if he can hold it, but that's what he'd have to do. But that looks a bit of a difficult angle. Failing that, he's going to have to get a cannon. I don't know whether he can get enough on it to get there. Well, he did. He's played it well. I think. That's 53. Yeah, nicely judged. He did miss a black. Very similar to this in the second frame. Gave a chance to Neil Robertson. No problems this time. One more red and a high value colour. 60. It's going to be 4 0. Well, Sean Murphy uh, well, he wouldn't want an interval the way he's playing. 61. And we know that the interval can change things around, but at the moment it's all one way traffic. The magician. Sixty-eight. His nickname is the magician. He's waving his magic wand here at the Alexander Palace. Sixty-nine. Cleared the table with 127 in the previous frame. It's not going to be easy to make 76. a second century here in this final. No Murphy. century break, but what an awesome display from Sean Murphy. Needs thinking about coming back to the table. Six, six, I think he'd be better Stay going six, to the mid-session interval. The crowd think he's going to concede. Has he got other ideas? He's coming back to the table, but uh, he's a long way behind. 69 points, the difference with 51 there. I just thought he would 
concede and head to the practice room. One. What is it, Ken? Is it five snookers he needs? Uh, five snookers, yeah. Eight. Nine. Sixty. Neil Robertson, sixty. Yeah, he looks yeah, over at Sean and says, that's enough. <laughs> an awesome display from Sean Murphy, looking for his first Masters title. But what a start. He's won all four frames. We didn't expect that. He leads 4-0. Yes, Neil Robertson appearing the third final here at the Masters in four years, and he was very much the favourite coming into this. Uh, is there any suggestion, John, that perhaps his efforts against Ronnie O'Sullivan and Ali Carter might have been it? Uh, there, there, there is some, because his safety play hasn't been as good as it's been in a couple of matches. Uh, one or two shots he's played, he's, he's promoted a red towards the corner, but he's also playing against someone who's supremely confident, and that's bringing pressure on itself. He's certainly not settled down. He hasn't looked the same player as he was against O'Sullivan yesterday or Ali Carter. Um, and to be honest with you, if I was him now, I would take 6-2 maybe after this session because at the moment he's been comprehensively outplayed. When was the last time you saw Sean Murphy playing quite so beautifully and with quite such confidence out there? I think he's playing better than he's ever played. So I, th I think this is the best we've ever seen him play. The last time I saw him play with, a, with as much enjoyment was when he won the World Championship. I have to go back that far. 2005, In yeah. a way, it feels, it feels like he's in the same frame of mind. You know, if he keeps this up, you're not only looking, and he says this is a long shout, I know, you're not only looking at the master champion, you're looking at a world champion. If he played like that, and it's a sustained 17 days for the world championship, I don't think anybody can touch him. He's like, he, he, there's no way anybody's going to get close to him. But there, of course, are a load of great players. Absolutely, yes. And, and, and we've seen Sean go into Leeds. He was 5-1 up against Mark Selby this time last Sunday and got over the line 6-5. So it ain't all over yet, that's for sure. But it's the super confident. He's taking on shots with so much danger. He potted a red, smashed into the reds all over the place. He just doesn't care. He, you know, and when you're in the frame of mind where you go, I'm going for this and I don't even care the consequences, that is the best way to go for your pot and get it. Absolutely. Well, it's been great stuff. I'm sure you at home are enjoying it as much as we are here. Uh, but this is the 15th match of the week. We've had thousands of great shots between now and last Sunday. But which is the shot of the tournament? We'd like your suggestions, please. It's uh, hashtag shot of the tournament, strangely enough. But here are a few of our suggestions for you. an angle on this black if he's going to get good position on the yellow. What a superb shot. Judge to a fraction. Absolutely fantastic. Marco Fu makes his third maximum break. What a shot. What a shot at that pace. I mean, to screw back and what? pot it. Hard enough just trying to stun that in, but to pot it and get the work on the cue ball and screw back to the bulk area, absolutely brilliant. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Nobody could have cued that any better. He's left a long pot on here for Robert. 
You wouldn't expect him to turn it down. And strokes it in beautifully. Oh, I love the way he played it. Positive. So it looks like two cushion escape here with pace. You've got to catch this just right. Oh, but played it perfectly. Superb shot. Absolutely pinpoint accuracy. You could not have played it better. Well, if he has got enough in the red, he could bring the black and reds into play as well as playing the plant. And he has done. You never know. You never know. There's six pockets on the table. There's six pockets on the table! There's six of them, you know! And he's on the green! That's exactly where it was going to go. What a shot. Brilliant. What do you think? Fraser Marnie's just tweeted, he says that Robertson's long red. I'm kind of with you on that one, Fraser, but what about you, Stephen John? We've worked it out. Yeah? Yeah, we know it. it, it, it... Oh, sorry, we're not going to tell you. Uh, <laughs> what, is, uh, what is understand... The, the, if you went back to the 80s, and I think there's some on YouTube, you see the shots of the tournaments that were then produced. Some of them were hilarious compared to these now. The, the shots are astonishing, the players play. They are astonishing. We, come on, don't tantalise no, us. Like no, no, we no, can't tell you. you. We'll tell you later no, no, tonight, no, no, I think. No, 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 no. No, you're allowed to tell me now. It's no, all right. No, no, no. Are you sure? Yeah. I know okay. you, I know just, you don't like He's just going to keep anything. us waiting, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. He's just going to keep us waiting. Can't believe it. There's plenty to choose from. i tell you what, fluke of the tournament has got to be Ronnie's uh, yellow. And that has been accessed via YouTube, I don't know how many times. It's one of the most watched pieces of footage in snooker for a very long time to equal Stephen Hendry's 775 centuries. Extraordinary piece yeah, of good fortune, was Yeah, but it was his expression it? as well. One. It was great because he knew Stephen was in here and he just turned around, a smile on his face and looked up at Stephen. It was a... Uh, in the bubble there, just to say, look, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to eat you a record with a fluke in it. Absolutely, we're fantastic. Okay, well, uh, from great shots to kicks, the vexed question of kicks always seems to rear its head, and uh, it always turns up, doesn't it, like a gate crasher at a New Year's Eve party? But you know, there might just might be a solution to the kicks, if not the gate crashers. Twelve months ago at the Masters, Sean Murphy and his friend, retired teacher Bob Ledger, outlined the work they'd been undertaking in an attempt to eliminate the dreaded kick from the game of snooker. What a kick that was. The oil that is present in the cloth during its manufacturing process, when laid on the table and subjected to the heat, which a lot of the public won't be aware of just how hot that playing condition is. The tables are heated from underneath, 
and the TV staging lights from above, that heat generates a reaction where that, that oil on that ball actually erodes the surface of the balls that are on the table. And when you get two balls that collide with two exposed areas, if you like, that's a kick. Sean and Bob came to the conclusion that kicks could be reduced and possibly eliminated from the game by the application of a polish that's produced by the ball manufacturers. You apply it and then buff it off. And it, it, what it does is it restores the outer covering of the ball to how it was when it left the factory. Somebody backstage replenishing and covering and polishing the balls and making them new again so that every however many frames, be it five or six, or whenever you started to see a kick, you can change a new set of balls, a bit like they do in tennis. And back in 2014, Sean called on the governing body, the WPBSA, to take action. Everybody goes, oh yeah, that makes sense, and nods along in agreement. We're just waiting for something just to be done about it at the moment, and uh, it'll be nice as and when our information is taken on board and something gets done about it. Well, since then we've been doing quite a bit of testing behind the scenes. Uh, we've also been um, doing some sampling in events as well, which um, you know, has caused us a bit of a stir at some point. But we'll, we'll continue to do that until we, of course, get, get things absolutely right. We felt that perhaps the, the surface of the ball was getting a little bit dry and losing its finish. And there's been all sorts of talk about that, about is it the heaters? And we did some testing actually out in Beijing in one of the practice rooms there, where we actually treated the balls with, with, a, with a finish and polish, which is, which, is, which is the same as that which is they're treated with when they leave the factory. We've actually uh, applied this, this uh, finishing polish to the ball in an event, the European Tour in Lisbon. We actually um, did this in a major event for the first time, which for, for us was a very brave move, but it stemmed from the volume of complaints that were received from the UK Championship. And even Ronnie O'Sullivan complained about the, the bouncy cushions at the UK Championship. I've never heard Ronnie complain about tables in, in all the years I've known him. And, and many of the other players, it was a consistent complaint. So we, we reached a point where we said, you know, it's time the WPSA stepped up and actually took the, took the lead on this to do something about it. We're very pleased that the WPBSA are starting tentatively to look at some uh, of our suggestions. This ball cleaner that we trialled in Portugal was one of our suggestions. It's a little disappointing that you know, after the positive start that we saw when it was used in Portugal, it wasn't used in the UK, it wasn't used in the Championship League last week, and it hasn't been used here. Um, that's disappointing, but I'm sure WPBSA have their reasons. We haven't done it here simply because we haven't had the, the opportunity now to, to issue the finishing polish to all the players. We're, we're actually in the process of doing that. We're going to issue the polish to all the players so that they can practice with it. We think we'll reach a point where we will actually use a polish on the balls at, in, in major events, but, but it will be perhaps at a, at a lesser rate than we did use in Lisbon. So, you know, we, we will get somewhere with this and hopefully we'll bring the satisfaction of the players along with us and, and we'll, we'll find some results. We all like drama, we all like to see those shots that are missed under pressure, but something happening in snooker that is nobody's fault and is completely random is very unfair, unfair on everybody. And now we've found the answer, there's no need for us to have it anymore. And uh, obviously that will be ruled out in the coming months, one would expect. In fact, we actually haven't had any kicks in this final so far, long may that continue. Uh, but as you know, Neil Robertson in a lot of trouble here, 4-0 down. Neil is officially the most successful non-British snooker player that there's ever been. He's the only one to have won a triple crown and been world number one. But as we say, he's in a lot of bother here. I read an excellent article this morning actually by uh, snooker writer Hector Nunns in which he wrote, Neil Robertson has the swagger of a winner, but off the table there is only humility and I think that says an awful lot about the Australian's personality in fact you can judge for yourself in this interview that he did the other day with John. So Neil what makes this Masters tournament such a special event for you? Um, well I think you know first of all watching it as a kid you know you're always watching all the very best players in the world play against each other um, it's exclusive to the top 16 in the world so you know every match is you know almost worthy of a final in itself so I guess you know that adds so much to the tournament already and I think that the fact that you know the general public and the crowds can
go to every match knowing that they're going to see a top quality player play. Um, always, you know, the, the crowd's always really good as well. So, um, you know, especially playing at the Alexandra Palace, I think is, is, is a brilliant venue and, um, you know, is, is, is probably second to, to the Crucible. Now, you've had really good success here, obviously a winner in 2012, runner-up in 2013. What do you remember about those two finals? Um, the, uh, the first final, um, you know, I was playing Shaw Murphy and um, I'd uh, come through a really tough part of the draw. I had um, Mark Allen, Mark Williams, I think was world number one at the time. They played Judd Trump in the semis. And um, yeah, so, you know, and then Sean in the final. So it was, a, it was a really tough path to the final. I played really, really well in the second session, I think, to go 9-3 um, up or something like that. And then, you know, Sean, as he always does, comes, comes back at you really strong. He, he starts going for everything and just everything hitting the back of the pocket. And, um, you know, he got it back to 9-6. And, um, yeah, I just had to keep my cool, though. You know, I had to keep calm, wait for my chance, because I'd been frozen out for three frames. And uh, he, he left me a long red off a safety shot, I think. And um, I knocked it in. I made 70 odd to, to win the frame in the match. And, uh, you know, up until today, probably the best memories I've ever had after winning a tournament was having uh, Alexander there oh, yeah. with me when he came on. That was just absolutely incredible. And, um, yeah, something that, you know, hopefully I can repeat this year. Well, what about the Selby final? What was, what was that about? We went into the first session, I was probably concentrating a little bit too much on trying not to watch him play. I think, you know, I kind of just read into uh, the belief that, you know, he can really put you off your game if, if you're sort of watching him play mm. because sometimes the frames can go really, really long. And so I was doing really silly things like um, I was reading the, uh, the towel, the letters on the towel. I was trying to, I did what Ronnie Sullivan did a few years ago in the UK where Ronnie was counting the, um, uh, the number of um, indentations on a spoon. <laughs> And um, so I thought I'd try it, playing Mark Selby, and I was, I was reading letters on a towel, and I was, you know, the letter B, and I was thinking, come up with words that begin with B. I was saying banana and <laughs> bazooka. And for some reason, I just come, kept coming back to banana every time. And, um, and so when my shot, you know, when Mark would uh, play a safety shot or his visit would finish, I'd come to the table not really kind of switched on. Yeah. And it was just, it, I don't know why I did it, it was just a tactic to just try something different, to try and stay focused on my game. So I played really well, played really attacking fluent snooker to get to the final. I, I thought I had a bit of an advantage going into the, the second session, you know, with the momentum, but, um, you know, he, he maintained his sort of solid performance. He didn't give me anything, um, you know, played a lot of really good containing safety shots where, you know, he didn't really put me in trouble, but just kept playing safety shots mm -hmm. until I'd be the one to be the aggressor and make the mistake. And um, yeah, you know, he played nearly sort of perfect match play snooker and, and was by far the better player. Than the Is it fair to say you've sort of come under the radar in this event? Because you, I, I think you've played well in parts, but have you been as consistent as you could have been? Um, no, I don't think I've been consistent as last year. Last year I was making a lot of quarterfinals. Um, you know, I started last season the way, uh, same way I did this season, winning Wushi Classic, uh, final of Australia. But last year, my performances in the Euro Tours were much better. I was making quarterfinals, semifinals, final. Um, so on paper, it looks as though I'm actually playing much better than maybe what I was. Um, the Euro Tours are very hard to gauge somebody's um, consistency or performances. I think yet, yeah, you know, the best way to do it, especially for top players, is to see how they do in the big tournaments like the Champion Champions, you know, the UK yeah. Masters, these sort of tournaments. Ones with the, you know. In particular, the one table set up, the big crowds, I think that's how you should truly gauge a, uh, a top player in the game. Now, there's much been mentioned about Peter Ebden and the, and the diet you're on. Is that for the benefit of just your health or for helping your snooker? Um, my choice to go on a plant-based diet was to try and not only improve my health, but also um, my snooker. You know, with the amount of travelling we do, um, Especially when you, we go to China, um, you know, you do take the risk when you do, when you're eating some meat dishes out there. There are a number of players who always get food poisoning. <laughs> there's, always, there's always one or two unlucky players that do. And going on a plant-based diet, you, you, you basically take that out of the equation. And um, yeah, you know, I, 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 tried, I tried a diet for about two months before I tried the plant-based diet. And um, I must admit my results in the snooker were a bit negative probably uh, because of that. Um, but it was just experimenting, trying to get the edge, trying to prolong my career as much as possible. Um, you know, physical fitness and, and diet, I think, is going to be a huge part in snooker for, for many years now. I think it's already changed dramatically over the last five years, probably Ronnie being the first player to really take that to another level. Um, you know, Peter's still playing fantastic snooker and he's on a plant-based yeah. diet as well. 
So, um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I've been doing it for two months now. Um, probably this is the first tournament where I know what to expect every day. I know how much to eat every day. Yeah. I'm, you know, really well prepared when I go away now. So, um, yeah, I'm in a really good spot with it now. And I think that um, I'm going to start to produce my best snooker. And I'm confident that I can reproduce that kind of form. Okay, Neil, thanks very much and the best of luck. All right, cheers. Well, he's been on this plant-based diet, but uh, his challenge has been wilting, if you'll pardon the pun, a little bit this afternoon. What does Neil Robertson have to do to try and change things around now? That's a little bit of self-preservation, really, for this next session. I mean, one thing he cannot do is lose this little mini-session 3-1, because if he comes in 7-1 behind, he's got no chance to see, not the way Murphy's hitting the ball. So, at worst way, 6-2 out the session. If he, even if he gets a 5-3 behind, that'll be a really big result for him. And your reading of it, Steve? Um, well, obviously, it would have been helpful if he'd have gone to the practice table uh, to try and get his arm going, put a few balls. Uh, desperate to get a frame on the board, really. Mm. You know, that settles any player down. But when you're playing against somebody who just seems like they're knocking everything in, the job is very difficult indeed. Yeah, well, we've got uh, eight frames this afternoon, so four more to play right now in this best of 19. Uh, remember, they're playing for a top prize of £200,000. Uh, Dennis and Ken are having their... Half-time oranges, so now it's the turn of Stephen Hendry and John Virgil in the box. Frame Gentlemen, five. good afternoon. What Thank have you, you made of this so far? Sean Murphy to break. Well, good afternoon, Hazel. And, uh, well, to me, it's just business as usual here for Sean Murphy. In his last two matches, he's played absolutely flawless. Although, as I say that, that's a dreadful break-off shot. But... Uh, Sean Murphy is really looking confident, Stephen, when he comes to the table. He's got a purpose, but he won't be pleased with this one. Oh, that's one thing that Neil would have been looking for in this fifth frame. An easy chance to get to the table. I don't think Neil has any problems in the self-belief department, but when you're 4-0 down in the final, it really tests it. No, from 2-1 down last night, Sean, to Mark Allen. Since then, he's just played incredible snooker. Nice angle on the blue here to crash into the pink if he wants. Well, chose to err on the side of caution. I think if it was 4-0 up, he would have played it. Six. Yes, as they say, circumstances alter cases. Just wants to get his hand on the table and start potting a few balls. Because at the start of this frame, his pot success it was very low. You've got to be 90% or above to have any chance, you would have thought. Sean Murphy well on that percentage, but not near. He started below 80%. Of course, it's the final, and it's the best of 19, first to 10 in the earlier rounds, of course. Best of 11, first to 6, 4 0 behind. You wouldn't hold much hope. Sean will be ruining that careless break off shot. Gifted this opportunity to, to Neil. of movement in the audience just caught his, the corner of his eye but as we could see as he was playing this red there is another red available into this corner that's what you've got to do if something puts you off get back up but he could have been better on this black just the wrong side of straight and trying to force it in Neil Robertson 50 Yeah, just they didn't seem to take his normal number of waggles with the cue there. Just played that a bit quickly. It shows a little bit of lack of composure. Obviously, four 0 down. It's not easy to be as comfortable as you'd like. Yeah, straight away, Sean bringing another thing into play. Going back to what the boys are saying in the studio, I think it's imperative for this match for Neil to win this session at least three one. These four frames.
6. Obviously, the black pot passes the pink to the middle pocket. Quite clearly. And now, with the black on its spot, available into both corners. What we've seen so far. 40. Frame winning opportunity. Fifty. Twenty-two. Just a little under hit. Now you see the highest breaks. Neil Robertson's own highest break only thirty. Not like him. Twenty-three. Not quite certain where this pink's going to go as we look at the points <laughs> scored. And Robertson, first four frames hasn't scored a hundred points yet. Well, the fact he's given this a little bit of thought tells me that he's, he's not absolutely perfect on this pink. So he's got a little bit to do with the cue ball. Maybe going around the back of the black. He's going to show from Sean Poise. Referee just asking for a second to get this pink as close to its spot as it can go. In a direct line with the middle of the top cushion. And as close to that red as it can go without touching. So he needs to move it a fraction further forward. He's just about on this red, Sean, to the left middle. Thank you. 29. And a full enough <laughs> pot that he can roll it through and leave himself nicely on the blue. Oh, well. There you go. Sean Murphy, 29. Didn't see that coming. Did not see that coming at all. We do say sometimes that the interval can just affect a player slightly. I fancied him missing that before the interval. I don't think there's a possibility of a double here. The red too close to the cushion, so just trying to get a good safety. Found the middle of the port cushion, but not tight, and a possibility of a pot here for Sean. And I think he'll take it on. The only red you feel is as though he could leave is the one he's playing. And if it goes in, he could be back on track to win the frame. Got the nice angle just to drop it in and bounce off the top cushion. Well, decided, decided to play it hard with the intention of it being a shot for nothing. Thought the only red he could leave was the one he was playing, and that's the one he has left. Yeah, surprised he didn't just play to drop on for the black. Right at the bottom of the bunch, we'll pop to the left corner. So if he gets just a little bit low on that red, he'll be able to follow through and disturb the bunch. So does he want to finish high? Yeah. Nice. He wants to be higher than that. I mean, many on many occasions, Stephen, you've had a, a lead like this. Did, did it affect you? Did, I mean, I don't remember you going into your shell, but when Sean played that long red, as we, I thought he'd have dropped it in and played for the black. 
Can you get a bit negative and a bit protective of your lead? It's not cost him. Yeah, I think sometimes you, you can look, we've got four more frames to go. You're thinking, just let's get another frame, then you're guaranteed to have a lead going into the, the night session, but that's not the way to think. Sean needs to be thinking, win this session, 3-1. And play his natural game, which is to attack and be aggressive. One. But on the other hand, when you're in Neil's position, every chance looks difficult before you get that first frame on the board. Eight. Mm, little shake of the head. Maybe he wasn't happy with the contact, but he had plenty of margin for error there. Could have hit that cue ball and gone up the table another foot. A little bit of a heavy sound to it. Still got the red to the middle, but if he was straight on it, it wouldn't be a problem. So he may have to go up for a bought colour here. I just feel one good positional shot and he'll be back on track to win the frame at this visit. Well, would you believe it? Another red to that pocket missed. Surprising. Yeah, I think until you get that fifth frame, so you've got a lead, it's always in the back of your mind, what if I come out at this 4-4 from playing so well? Oh, oh dear. Well, just overran it a fraction, and that red is now making, well, the black just not inviting at all. You couldn't do much with that. The black's a very difficult pot. Striking down on it. Good pot on the red, but just lost the cue ball. The black is surely much too risky. thinking time, understandable. I think the one thing here he's got to do, I mean, he'd love to play a, a telling safety, but I don't think he can. The most important thing here is not leave a, an easy pot for your opponent. Mm. Neil Robertson. Well, he couldn't do much else. It's not unlucky, because, uh, you know, he had a lot of margin of error when he potted the red. Just let the cue ball run loose. As I say, all he could do was just not leave an easy pot on for his opponent, and I think he's done that. There is a red to the left centre. Apparently he's not even looking at that. I think it's sometimes dangerous to start becoming cautious.
it's starting to turn into quite a, an important frame this in the context of the match Sean's missed a couple of easy pots Neil's also had a couple of chances so quite a big frame this this afternoon where's the cue ball going Ooh, it's a good safety now Yeah, when you're 4-0 down, you need a, a bit of help from your opponent, and Neil has certainly had that with those two reds that Sean's missed into the middle pocket. And that wasn't difficult, and the next one was even easier. And notice, one was one side of the middle, one was the other. So he made a slight adjustment and overdid it. And I agree with you now, Stephen, what a massive frame this is. You would think that Neil would be looking to play safe off the red that's near the left-hand side cushion. Well, he's deciding to play the one off the right-hand side cushion. I don't see this is the best shot to, to play Italian safety. Yeah, the only reason I can think of is because he's left-handed. doesn't feel that red's as awkward. Yeah, but fair point. The other one. Yeah, fair point. at this red to the left corner, stun off the side cushion for the black. Again, it's only red he can leave. Well, I think the red does pot to the right centre. But is there a path in and out of bulk without colliding with the yellow? I think he can just about avoid the yellow. And of course, if he plays it with pace, he can come back to this top cushion and out position on the black. Or he could play it a bit more positive because I think that red by the green is not available. I think he can avoid the kiss on the yellow. So therefore, he could play for the blue or the pink. I think the only red he can leave is the one he's playing. Well, he doesn't fancy it. Bringing this red into play. Needs a good cue ball, though. And he has got a good cue ball. There still may be a possible attempt to the red that Neil turned down. If Sean felt he could play the pot and avoid the in off into the far left corner, it'd be worth having a go at. Sean got a 13 point lead. Still a possible 67 points remaining. Purposely was leaving the cue ball in the jaws of the pocket. So it looked safe enough. The problem with that shot, he's left Sean a clear path to that red that's just next to the green, so Sean's got an easy safety shot off that red, back to the bolt cushion. Well, he's not playing it. He's playing a cross double, is he? No? Well... Was it safe enough? But he's not a telling safety shot. No, both players seem to are just playing containing safeties. Just determined not to let their opponent have an easy pot. 
rather than, as you say, play a more positive safety and really gain an advantage. Yeah, I can understand that from Neil Robertson's point of view, being 4-0 behind, but you think Sean would be a little bit more attacking in his, his safety thoughts. Well, you're missing those two balls that we pointed out. It'll be a little bit of a knock to his confidence. Mm. Could be in trouble here, Neil. It could be snookered behind the pink on all reds. That wasn't the best shot to play. He's only got to just nudge this red past the pink. Delicate. But you think he's certain to get the snooker. I'm amazed he's looking at the top here. This is the easiest snooker you'd ever have. Unless he just doesn't fancy playing the delicate shot, but surely you've got to play it, just roll it and play the snooker behind the pink. I think because the red's touching the pink, he's scared that if he catches it slightly thick, he'll stick the red on. I think if they weren't touching, it would be straightforward. But the shot's definitely on, I think. Well, the thing is, it's a shot. If you if you get it, it could win you the frame. Got to play it. knows it's the right shot. I just think he's gone into a mode where he doesn't want to take any risks. Sort of half-hearted attempt to at the pot, and he's lucky that he's not left anything that easy. I mean, this red will pot along the ball cushion, but it's a tough one, and you won't want to be playing it with too much pace. But the slight angle, as we can see, but he didn't play the pot. But didn't play the safety too good either. to the right centre, that's a kind of shot to nothing. It's been a while since the last pot, John. Yeah, but as we say, both players at the moment playing containing set. This is a very big frame, particularly for Neil Robertson. And just it in the 13 minute mark since the last ball was potted. That shot that Sean Murphy had a chance of before just nudging the red past the pink, that's not an option now for Neil. But he'll be playing safe off the red and bringing the cue ball back to the top cushion. Why, oh, where's the red going? Oh, that's a bonus. Well, there was no hand raised, so he obviously played it. So you have to say, good shot. 
Yeah, maybe he thought it was a possibility of going close to the the pocket. Now, has he got any kind of well, not much of an angle on this black? More pace, more likely to miss it. Well, he did well to get that eye up the table, but he's not done anything good. Eight. Looking at those two reds in the middle of the table, I don't think they're a plant. Maybe a gap between the red and the brown for the, the red nearest the bulk cushion to be possible. Mm, there was, but it was tough, and as is always the case, he was hoping that he wasn't going to leave anything, but he's left a nice, easy starter for Sean. That was a tough pot, but that's all he had to go at. Perfect on this, so a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. Oh, well, he, he could just roll it in and finish what? on the brown. <coughs> the red near the bottom cushions, not too bad. The two reds in the middle of the table are slightly awkward. Ten points the lead. Fight. You need these three remaining reds to clinch the frame at this visit. Well played, super shot. Six. Beautiful cueing. And of course, that's the advantage of having the cue power, Sean Murphy. Screw back, lots of right hand side, flick those two reds into play, frame at his mercy. Twenty-one points the lead now. If he potted red and pink, he'd go 16. twenty-eight points in front with twenty-seven remaining. And that's what he's decided to 17. do. Seventeen. So this to get to the snooker's required stage. Well played. Just an excellent shot off the third last red. It really was. 23. Sean achieved this, what would have been his first mini goal of this afternoon session is to get a lead going into tonight. So he's guaranteed that now. Now it's just all about 28 and as big a lead as he can. And uh, just a little wobble from Sean in this frame, but Neil unable to take advantage of it. 37. Didn't bother about the black, so one in time for Neil Robinson and his supporters. Sean Murphy goes marching on. He's now five frames in front. 
and as Stephen says, he cannot be uh, overtaken at least this afternoon. And Steve, can you con contrast the, the, the levels of authority shown by Neil Robertson today as opposed to the ones he showed against Robertson and Carter? Well, he, th he seems like he's sort of a bit more in his shell than, than perhaps he has been in, in the tournament. And that was probably no more highlighted than when he had a chance early on in that frame uh, to go into the pack off the blue. Uh, Stephen Hendry in commentary predicted that he was going to pot the blue, smash into the pink. It's, a, it's a, a normal shot we see these days. He chose to play a more conservative way of going about them. It can sometimes work, but as it happened, he came unstuck. Sean Murphy then had the chance to do exactly the same a few shots later and he careered into the pack to give himself the chance to win the frame there and then. Then it got scrappy and then all of a sudden Sean Murphy saw the possibilities and started thinking about 5-0. Mm. He balked a bit at that and then if ever there was going to be a frame where Neil Robertson could have turned the tables it was the end of that frame. Now he's not done that, he's even in a bigger hole. Oh, he sure is, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Can he be overtaken? Let, let's just put your money where your mouth is, John. Is it Murphy's title? Oh, on current form, the way that's going, I think I think he's run his race, Robertson. Really? Uh, yeah, I think he's run his race. I hope I'm wrong, and I'm wrong plenty of times, <laughs> but I think he's run his race yesterday. I think world number one playing Ronnie O'Sullivan in his own backyard was a massive game for him yesterday, and I think he's put a major effort into that, the one with Carter. I think he's run his race. But it's all very well being 5 0 in front. It's another thing. Halfway there, there's a long way to go. And getting over Thank that you. line Central is, down, as you've please. always told me, the most problematic Frame element six. of this game. Neil it Robertson is. But um, you know, it, Sean Murphy can do no more than keep on trying to win the frames. As long as he can keep Neil Robertson down, he's going to be relentlessly trying to get as many frames on the board in this session as he possibly can. Back we go. Three more to play this afternoon. Yeah, interesting chat there from <coughs> Steve and John. One thing I would say in that frame, Stephen, there was a couple of wobbles from Sean, and, you know, as you say, he's thinking now, how big a lead can I have going in this season? He's bound to have a, a lead. There's eight frames to be played in this first session, so worst way it'd be 5-3. But you don't want to be looking at the scoreboard too much, and Neil, at some times, will sort of relax, get a chance. Might be just one shot at this game that can turn you turn a frame, turn your attitude, make you more positive. And he's such a good player, Neil. And remember, he's an Aussie and they don't give up easy. Poor safety from Sean. Well, 40%, 50%. You reckon about two thirds. I'm looking at 66% pot success, really. So both below what is actually required. But here's another chance for Neil. Usually so good at these shots. But once again, didn't fully commit. And when you're trying to screw back, airing on the side of safety, that makes that pot that much more difficult. You see the extra little bit of effort you've got to put into the, the cue as you strike it. Whereas, if you're feeling comfortable, you know, you just stroke them in. And he normally does that. So he's suffering at the moment. Got to hang on in there, though. Well, he didn't have to wait long for the next chance. He's got to start scoring. It was close. Needs a sizable break now, does Neil Robertson, to make Sean Murphy start thinking. And that pot success of 75% is far too low to win a match at this level.
But this is a chance now to put things right. Tournament pot success was 91%, 92% Sean Murphy. In this final, Sean's improved on that. And he's <coughs> gone backwards, but Eight. as I say, this is a good opportunity. Got to make the most of it. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. No, I think it has to go into the bunch here. There's possibly a red at the bottom of the bunch goes to the right corner, but when you've got that loose one out there, definitely it has to go into them here. Well, surprised at that. Twenty-four. Well, for Neil's sake, he gets a good angle again. 25. Well, because he finished loan already, he was able to split them, so he's in good position here now. 25. Big visit now in the context of Neil's match, this. Feely has to win it in one visit. 27. If he didn't, and was to lose it, I think it would more or less end his, his chances. 28. Thirty-four. Amazing stat there. Thirty-five. The final. Robertson's highest break of the match so far in the sixth frame. Thirty-five. thought there's three loose reds but then nice to get on I don't need to play a cannon just yet 42. Forty-three. He struck that well. Just finished an awkward angle in the black. Doesn't really want to play for the red and the black cushion, but I think he has to. Use your full attention. I mean, obviously, expect to pot it every time, but if you don't concentrate, sometimes they can catch you out. Just don't catch the right knuckle as you look at it there. 51. There's a red that's available into the right corner, so he doesn't have to play any cannons here. There's enough reds in the open to clinch the frame at this visit without having to risk any cannons 59. on those three reds that are tucked together and the red on the right hand side cushion. 
So a red and a colour. 66. We'll see his first frame on the scoreboard. And what a relief that will be. 67. 72. Well, a lot of encouragement from the, the crowd. We want to see a match, obviously. It's been a bit one-sided so far. But he'll be feeling a bit better now. He's got his first frame on the scoreboard. 73. And this black will put him 80 points in front with just 59 remaining. So no return to the table for Sean Murphy. He tried to get the cannon, but just didn't work out. 80. Just overcut it. Neil Robertson, but Sean Murphy won't bother different. coming back to the table. He nods the concession, so it'd be a relief. Neil Robertson gets his first frame on the scoreboard. And Sean Murphy, well, maybe think he was a bit unlucky there to leave the red, but Neil did the business for the first time in the match, but he still trails by four. Oh, John, do you sum up the relief that you must be feeling now? Yeah, I said before that I think his race might be run. Well, the stalls have just opened because he's come out of them. Um, Brilliant break of 80. We can all play when the sun's shining, but when there's a black cloud hanging around you, it's very difficult. And he's dragged that up from the, from somewhere there, an 80 break. And that was what he's been playing like in the last couple of matches. I, like everybody else, want to see a match. We all expected to see one today, so that's the start of it there. Yeah, and it's, as Stephen Hendry pointed out, his highest break before that in the 30s, before that, in the, in the previous five frames. It's been all one-way traffic until now. Yeah, um, I mean, I think Sean would be happy now um, with uh, sharing the next two frames. Um, just to sort of keep the momentum going. But uh, the, the problems for, for, for Neil Robertson are to get round and turn around, you know, to dominate things. Uh, and, and at the moment, amongst the balls, Sean looks pretty assured. So given equal opportunities, it's going to be tough for him to get back. It, it, it would need Sean to completely collapse. Uh, you know, he, he arguably showed signs that he faltered to miss a couple of blues in the middle pocket. But I don't see him completely collapsing today. But you know, obviously stranger things have happened. Can you describe what it's like um, to have put in peak performances, as you call mm. them, John, to have played at your absolute best and to be on sort of tenterhooks about whether it's going to come again in the next match? Are you always wondering whether it will be there or do you rely on, on that gas supply, as it were, to always be? No, and if, you, well, what, if you're as confident as Neil Robertson is and he's the world number one, you think you'd expect you're going to play like that every game. You think you're going to play it, you know, I'm playing fantastically, why can't I play? Fa Sometimes it just comes as a shock when you turn up the following day and it's not quite there. He's not dipped that much. It's just that his safety, which has been immaculate, hasn't quite been there. He's missed one or two shots. He's maybe refused one or two positive shots in the match and all of a sudden found himself behind to an opponent who's played totally attacking snooker and knocked in everything. Uh, and one thing, as we know, if, if people that have watched snooker over the years, that, that frames seem to sort of come in blocks. Uh, and one minute player will reel off a number, then and then the other guy will get back into it for a while. So it's not it's not out of the question that Neil can win these next two, but it's it's a it's a tough ask even so. I tell you what, it will be a major psychological blow to Sean Murphy if Neil Robertson does win the next two. Next two, two yeah. OK, well, he's done so much Thank of the hard work to establish a 5-0 lead. Neil Robertson, the world number one, has a foothold in this final at last. Yeah, foothold days or one rung on a, a ladder, whatever we want to call it, but he'll be just happy he's got that frame on the board and the fact that he did it in one visit. Because that's what he's going to do. If you're playing catch-up, you're not going to do it in bits and pieces. You need to win frames quickly. But two big, big frames now. Mm, but caught that much too thick. That safety. Shh, can you be quiet, please? Shh. And has left a chance straight away for Sean. Caught it half ball, needs to catch it quarter ball. There's 
the match time, just coming up to two hours. Not the best two hours that Neil Robertson's ever had on the snooker table. He <laughs> was hoping to get the cannon and stay on the black, but he's not on the black. In fact, he's on absolutely nothing. Name your colour. Green ball. Sean Murphy won. Pretty good safety, but for it to be a telling one, he just needed that cue ball to run a bit further. It's an easy pass back to the ball end down the right-hand side of the table as we look. Not bad, but just a little bit shorter pace. Than that. Wonderful shot. And the side he had on the cue ball to take him up for the brown. Wonderful cueing. that position of shot nicely. May have to play for the black in the same pocket as the red. Six. But that was never going to be a problem. Now there's a few reds available into the same pocket as the black. He's going to have to screw off the side cushion, it would appear. He's got plenty of margin of error. Perfect. May just have the angle. We can roll this red in, the one that's in the left hand side of the table, and just cannon into the red just below it. Hold for the black and nudge that red into a nice potable position. That's the advantage of playing inch perfect positional play. Fourteen. The two reds that are above the black, just to the left of the bunch. The right-hand side one, if it goes into that with pace. Mm, I'm surprised he didn't hit it. A bit more pace than that. It's ideal to just, with his cue power, to screw in that right one and just open the bunch up. Touching ball. Still expect him to pot this red, but it's not easy to get ideal in the black now. Yeah, and also he's missed the opportunity to bring other reds into play. He only nudged one really into the open. Twenty-two. Got to cue this Blackwell. He's not absolutely inch perfect.
But it's nice enough, though. Thirty-one. Well, we're just looking there. Yellow ball. A few people thought that maybe Sean just touched the red, but he didn't. And knowing Sean as I do, if he had it done, he'd have declared it on himself. Let's have another look. No. 33. No, nowhere near the red. Another very 34. Well struck. Medium range pot there. You know, there isn't one player that wouldn't admit to that, John. No, I mean, sometimes if you catch a red with your sleeve, you might not feel it, but you certainly hear the, the cue tapping the red or feel it. Thirty-nine. Forty. Well, that's worked out absolutely inch perfect. Looks like another frame to Sean Murphy here. And this has been the one thing for me throughout the tournament. Even from forty-six, family played Stephen Maguire in the quarter-final. Forty-seven. He was two 0 behind, and you and Stephen had not missed a ball, and Sean hadn't had a chance. But then, when he did get his chance, he just came to the table so positive, and that's what you look for in a player when they're so confident. And he just doesn't look as though he's going to miss. Fifty-four. He's missed a couple, okay, since the mid-session interval. But invariably, the only time you fancy 55. him breaking down is if he runs out of position. And this black will clinch this frame. Sixty-two. Body blow for Neil Robertson when he left the arena after winning the last frame. He would have been looking to try 63. and win these last two frames. He's now going to be, at best, 6-2 behind. 69. Well, he's missed Sean the Murphy. red. 69. Like Sean to miss one with the rest, but that was enough there. You see the nod of concession from Neil Robertson, so Sean Murphy got the opportunity once again just needs the one chance and it's enough now to give him a five frame lead <laughs> one more to play he leads 6-1 on, yeah we'll just clarify this again when Sean was bridging over the Reds it was it was one of those but as you say Stephen if, if he'd have touched the red with the tip of his cue well any player worth his salt would have declared it on himself but no, nowhere near making the foul. And as I say, it's one that's a play you'd have felt. But he's looking good, isn't he? Yeah, and it would have been a... It's, it's as if it was a little wake-up call, wasn't it, losing that frame to Neil? He'd, he'd perhaps he'd missed a couple of easy reds in the fifth frame into the middle, and the, maybe the frame after that he missed a couple of long balls. But, uh, yeah, it seems to have woken up again, and he's, and he's back focused. And I think that's impressed me a bit. Sean in the last few months, so it went, we're winning frames in one visit. He's doing that a lot more. He used to break down a lot in sort of 40s and 50s and let his opponent back into frames. And there's the stats, and I think that the main one that you look at there, pot success, 92% Sean Murphy, 82%. That's well below what's okay. required. Thank you.
Settle down, please. The final frame of this session. Neil Robertson to break. Referee Brendan Moore tells us what this is. The final frame of this session. Neil Robertson Don't take breaking pictures with off. Your flash on, please. So just give him, you feel any hope going into this evening. He needs this frame. Hey, and going back to what John Parrott was saying about, you know, beating Ronnie yesterday, that was a massive match for him. And perhaps he's just not on it today. I'd be disappointed if that's that was his attitude. The world number one, the mass is a massive tournament. Shouldn't really be a problem getting himself back up for a final like this. down to it, he's just been outplayed. Yeah, and Sean Murphy's done that to most of his opponents this week. Right back to the UK, I mean, Sean Murphy played absolutely superb. How he lost his match against Marco Fu, I'll never know. But this week, he's getting the rewards for his excellent play. Certainly played the aggressive shot there. Yes, didn't see the safety. But there was no way that he was going to avoid a kiss on the second red and have him miss the pot. Chance for Neil. As I say, why this frame is important, and I know he's a long way behind, but if he was to win this frame and go 6-2 behind, he'd come out this evening thinking, if I can win three of the first four frames, I'm, I can get back in the match. So you've got to look for mini goals all the way along when you're playing catch-up. Yeah, 6-2 behind basically means, at worst, they can win 8-3 tonight. Which is a tall order against Six. someone playing as well as Sean, but... As you know, Snooker, if, if you're at the table, your opponent's not. Doesn't matter how well he's playing. Seven. You can see this is a must-win frame for Neil this match. <coughs> Cannon 14. left him nicely on the red to the corner. Fifteen. <coughs> Poor shot if he's straight on the black. Shouldn't be a problem. These two players have both got excellent cue actions. Tremendous cue power. 22. Twenty-three. Hmm, that's careless. Okay, he might be able to pot the blue comfortably, but he played for the pink. And he overscrewed it. But I think he can just about get to the middle of the cue ball in potting the blue.
minor problem solved. 28. Twenty-nine. <clears throat> Slightly awkward bunch to open up because of where the pink is. Yeah, I think if it wasn't so easy to play on that red in the ball, Ken, he may consider playing the yellow and coming off the side cushion and going into the, the cluster, but he knows it's just a simple positional shot to play for that red in the ball, Ken. But now it's imperative, as Stephen mentioned, you just can't play on the blue, the pink's the blocker to the reds. 32. You feel if he's going to go into the red, which you... I think he'd be looking to do sooner rather than later. He's going to have to do it off a bought colour. Yeah, I think green is best. That's why he's looking to get on. He can do it with the brown as well, off the side cushion. You'd always think he'd perhaps have the red to the right centre if he didn't get one on, get on one from the bunch, as it were. Yeah, that's the line we're thinking. Just didn't catch the heart of them, and I asked the question, what is he on? 37. This is good. It really is. Six one down. Showing great bottle and belief here in this break. Still looks very focused around the table, very composed. Needs that cue ball to run past that red though. Oh dear. 43. Hmm. Well, we say this game's all about fraction. If that cue ball to run just a fraction more, it'd be nicely on a choice of reds and with a frame at his mercy. In the end, he had to bite the bullet and play safe. And you know, honestly, he could have played a better safety shot than that. Of an opportunity, Sean Murphy cued that absolutely beautifully once again off the two cushions on the black. Came to the table 43 points behind. A chance, a big chance to win the final frame of this session. Eight. Yeah, 4 to 3 8 behind. He's pretty close to being favourite Nine. for this frame now, the way he's been playing. <coughs> 16. <coughs> 17. A little bit low on that black for comfort. Yeah, the line of reds available into the right 24. middle pocket, available into the left corner. 25. Decided to go up for the blue. 
Just overdone it slightly. Just got to avoid the kiss on the pink here. I want it to be a little bit straighter on this blue. Well, he's decided to play for one of them into the right middle. 13 points behind. 13. It's amazing, though. This is all caused by just coming an inch short in the black two shots ago. Neil can only hope. Yeah, keep that well, too, well almost. So perhaps maybe showing a little bit of tension here. This is a big visit at the table for Sean Murphy. I'd love to have a 7-1 lead going into tonight. Another problem right in the heart of the pocket. Yeah, he'd certainly have some breathing so space, wouldn't he, if he came into the evening session with a six-frame advantage. Goals thought about 39. trying to disturb that red away from the side cushion being right handed. I'm not certain why. And that green going in reduces the rears now to just one point. 42. And Neil Robertson, for most of the afternoon, he's had to sit there and suffer. Forty-three. Straighter on this blue, but he may have just landed where he could roll the pink in and cannon this red. Not bad. He'd like to nudge it a little bit closer to the pocket. I think it's cuttable. Forty-nine. But a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. It's not a formality. This. Yeah, could this red? Be a big shot in this match. There's uh, Sean's mother, Jean. First time she's come and watched him play <coughs> since he played in his teens, so I don't know if she's handling the pressure. And Elaine, his fiance. But they'll be very happy with what they've seen so far this afternoon. Well, he's not going to play the cut. And well, playing this, as he has done... Sean Murphy, 49. This stands the initiative to me to Neil Robertson in this important tactical battle. Not put any pressure on Neil whatsoever here. Missed a the trick there. If you can get a snooker at this stage of a frame, it's always a big advantage. And it looks like Sean Murphy's got that advantage. Excellent shot. Bill Robertson now in big, big trouble. Because as we always say, it's not hitting the red. Can you get it safe? And with the colours on the spots, if he leaves the red, Surely, he loses the frame. He'll be pleased he's not left the red. That's all he can hope for. Side. <coughs> 
Well, there's not a lot of the red sticking out, but the way you'd play this, you'd play with a trace of left-hand side, and if you missed the red on the way up, you'd catch it on the way back, coming off the ball cushion. The only problem is, catching the red thin, you could knock it towards the left corner pocket. So he's... Oh, well, he couldn't have played it better. Eyes like a hawk. Sean with a problem. Oh, he's playing it with pace. He's played it with pace. Where's the red going? Chance for Neil Robertson. OK, nothing's that easy for him at the moment, but this is a big, big shot coming up now. Get in, you beauty. Great shot. Now he's got a chance. One to get his second frame on the scoreboard. And that red was a great shot. That's six, one down. Six. That was like really trusting your cue action there. Brown and blue. Eleven. Quiet down, please. That's what's needed. Fifteen. Well, Sean Murphy looked as though he might be taking a six-frame advantage into this evening's session. But as that pink rolls towards the pocket and drops, it only be four frames. And that's, I suppose, the best that Neil Robertson could expect to get out of it. Losing the first five frames. Sean Murphy won't be disappointed, but Neil Robertson, you feel, has just held on there, and we still may have a match on this evening. But Sean Murphy leads 6-2 after the first session. Yeah, it's an emphatic scoreline so far in favour of the magician, Sean Murphy, but what a lifeline you feel from Neil Robertson in that final frame. All credit to him. I mean, I know he's the world number one and the rest of it, but to win two frames at the last three there, one with an 80 break and then to win that last one. He was unlucky when he played off the blue and didn't come past the red on the red, and he looked like the frame had gone. But honestly, to, to win the, two at the last three frames, commendable effort. And that thin snick on the red to hide it and put uh, Sean Murphy in trouble there. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was teetering on the edge because he had to get out of a snooker and hope it went safe himself. But uh, Sean failed to get the snooker perfectly. But that thin edge, as you say, and a brilliant shot he played. Um, from Sean's perspective, nothing you can complain about. He's won four frames at the first mini session and he's retained that lead advantage going into the, the night session. And Neil Roberts has now got to win eight of the 11 frames this evening to have a chance. We've had some very, very strong big comebacks in the <laughs> Masters finals. I hate to remind Sean Murphy, but there is a history of this, isn't there? Yeah, it's an event that's thrown it up many a time. I remember one year I was asked to go down and interview the winner. It was about 9-4 or something, and I was there till 9-9. Nine, nine. I didn't come <laughs> back to the studio for about three hours. So it can happen here. It has done before. It throws up great finals. What Neil Robertson will do tonight is he'll, he'll hopefully come up for that session this evening, forget it 6-2 and just say, look, I've got to win the first mini session at least 3-1. If I get 4-0, it's a bonus. And he'll know, he'll know full well that there is an expectation and a different type of pressure on Sean Murphy coming into this evening session than there is on the start of, of the match. Because when you're in front and you know the finishing line is getting closer, it is very easy to look over your shoulder, to not play positively. It's very easy for the book to become just a fraction tentative with your shot selection, perhaps with the way you pot the balls, and that can be enough to put you completely out of your stride. Of course, Neil Robertson goes into the, the tonight yeah. session with absolutely nothing, nothing to, to lose, lose other than to go for it. Yeah, yeah, and it's the Paul Hunter, it's the Mark Selby situation. They just go for it. But I was going to ask you, John, is there any suggestion that, that uh, the loss on that final frame might be 
slightly unnerving for Sean. Um, his connections, and they'll be saying to him straight away, listen, would you take the 6-2 this afternoon? That's the first thing they'll be doing. They won't be mentioned in the last frame. They'll be saying, what a great lead you've got. You played brilliantly well. Just keep doing the same thing. OK. We've talked about Sean Murphy and how he's been so authoritative and so aggressive out there. And it's great from his perspective to see that that kind of confidence that he showed in the quarterfinal and in the semi-final has stayed with him right through this final so far. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think as John Virgo said, uh, somewhere down the line in commentary, he seems like he's in a good place. Uh, and a, a snooker player who's relaxed on the table, happy with how things are going. Obviously, he's had a great season. He's been knocking in breaks for fun. Uh, yeah, it is very much a confidence game. And, and the difference between him a year ago to now is, is magnificent from his perspective. If you were, if you were in, in Neil Robertson's corner and you were trying to analyse what's happened between yesterday's semi-final against Ronnie O'Sullivan and that wonderful, compelling performance that you put in, what would you be telling him and what would you be saying to him going into this evening's I'd just say you've had a slightly session. below session, below par session, it just hasn't worked out for you, put a line through it and come out tonight all guns blazing. I just, I, I, there's not much else you can say, he, just, he definitely dipped below the standard he's had, Sean yes has played fantastically well and scored, but he hasn't been in a lot of trouble Sean to get some of the opportunities that he's got today, Robertson safety plays dip slightly, scoring, missed a few balls as well, so just put a line through that and make sure you come back refreshed tonight and give it everything. OK, it's going to be a fascinating watch tonight, and there is news breaking this afternoon actually because uh, World Snooker have just had a board meeting today and uh, it's just been announced that uh, the deal to keep the World Championship at the Crucible has been extended by two years until 2017 and that will mark the 40th anniversary since the World Championship started at the Crucible Theatre in 1977 and in fact the chairman of World Snooker Barry Hearn has just given us this quote about the news. It's really good news you know you know we love the history of the World Championships and the excitement of the Crucible the uniqueness of Sheffield and we've always said that everyone's always telling us one day we're going to China, one day we're going to move. And we've always said we've been consistent in saying that while we've got the support of Sheffield and while we've got the support of the BBC, nothing changes. So today I'm really pleased to say that, you know, after some very friendly negotiations, we've reached agreement with Sheffield City Council to extend our occupancy at the Crucible until 2017. Fantastic news and it's actually great for the city as well because they work out in economic terms it's worth about £5 million in local revenue to the city um, throughout those 17 days so it is a win-win. Um, how do you greet that news Steve? Uh, well, I think uh, as delightedly as, uh, as Barry does. Uh, I know full well that he, he doesn't want to see anything move away to China from a point of view of the World Championship unless it absolutely had to. Um, and whilst he's trying to build up markets around the world I'm sure they can build up their own events into massive events and that's probably a better plan you know the world championship is, is, historically is in, in in Sheffield at the Crucible it's our Wimbledon why why change it just for the sake of a few quid okay well and the great news is that it's staying but there's also some very interesting news from the perspective of the players outside the top 16 because they're going to have to come through three best of 19 frames to get to the Crucible. This is going to be an almighty scrap in qualifying this year, isn't it? Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> that is horrible. You used to be lucky enough to be playing one and all that. We're playing three matches now. To stand, there's going to be some sweating in the last qualifying match. Yeah. And remember, 16 extra places, invites for the likes of... John Parrott. Oh, yeah. Perhaps Alison well, Fisher, even. Yeah. Earl Strickland. Who knows who they could be? You're going to do it? I might do. OK. Yeah. Watch this space, Steve. All right, we'll look forward to it. Uh, well, what a start to this Daffabet Masters final. We thoroughly enjoyed it this afternoon. It looks like the magician, Sean Murphy, is on something of a mission today. He is 6-2 in front, and we'll be back at 7 o'clock this evening uh, for part two of what is a Masters final sequel between Messrs Robertson and Murphy. I really hope you can join us for what sounds like an interesting night. Bye for now.